All right, everybody, welcome back to No Man's Sky. I'm Captain Beefy with the Game Vault here today. Let's talk about starting a new game in 2022. This game's been around for six years now, and it's grown in leaps and bounds since its uh, original release, which was quite the failure at first. Um, but quite honestly, through the years, it has become an amazing game that's a lot of fun. <clears throat> They've added <clears throat> so many new features to the game that as a new player in 2022, there's so much to do that it might be a little intimidating at first. So my goal is to help get you started as a new player and give you some tips and tricks on how to get yourself moving in this game so that you can progress and get to the fun stuff as quickly as possible. And as you can see, when you start a new game, there's five modes, a normal mode, a survival mode, permadeath, creative, and the community expedition. A community expedition usually lasts around, I don't know, six weeks, two months, roughly. I haven't really messed around with it too much. I did do this last one, and it was a blast. Uh, the creative mode is there for those of you who just want a completely chill game where, you know, you can just build stuff and all that. I played around with it once or twice, found it quite boring. Permadeath is for you sadists. Or machicus, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, you can spend hours and hours in the game and end up doing something stupid and dying and losing everything. So don't recommend it, especially if it's your first time out. Survival, survival mode is fun, but um, like you have a smaller inventory. Everything costs more. It's a little more hazardous. It's, you know, it's fun, but it's a little more challenging than normal mode. But I highly recommend you start off in normal mode. Not, you know, ignore creative. Um, you could start off the community expedition if it's your first time, but I'd recommend normal mode, especially since that community expedition can be finished in about 10 or 11 hours. And what you win in there can transfer over into your main game, and we'll talk about that in a later video. But this gives you the simple rundown on what to do. And it's and it, there's a tutorial in the beginning we're going to try and push through that as quick as possible and get moving. So, let us begin. All right, well, let's get to it. So, you start off on a very crappy planet. And, um, yeah, and it leads you through what you got to do here. So, we need to perform a scan pushing L3 to find sodium to recharge. Oh, look at that. We don't have any sodium. So, we need to get ferrite dust to get it. Okay. So, let's jump right into it. We'll talk as we go along. So... The game has a lot of resources, and resource acquisition and management is important, especially early in the game, right? So it wants us to get 75 ferrite dust, and the best way to get ferrite dust early game is to just mine it from these different minerals and rocks that you find around. And we're up to, what, 52 now? We're about to have 75, which would be great. As you can see, our thermal protection is falling. Now we can repair our scanner damage. So let's do that. Go in here, repair it. Use that 75 ferrite dust and we're done. And now we can look for 
some sodium, and sodium will be represented by, there it is there, and a little uh, yellow uh, diamond. Ooh, and as you can see, we're in bad shape. So yeah, they start you off on purpose on a really crappy world, and it starts off as a challenge, so. Well, let's get this sodium rich plant pushed down. Battery, hazard, sodium, and boom. So we're about halfway there, right? But as you can see, we're going to definitely want more sodium, but for now it's saying uh, reach the mark signal, so we can see it right there. About 706 U away. So this is going to take some climbing and some flying, and even though we don't have much in our jetpack, if you keep jetpacking up a mountain, you will get there. In the meantime, we're going to keep scanning, and if we see sodium, we will detour for that, and we should be uh, gathering up other resources as we go, because it's all going to be necessary later on. So. Care if it's ferrite dust, carbon, oxygen, we're gonna need it. Some of these things, if you saw that, we can't use it. We need an advanced mining laser, so we'll have to get back to things like that. Blue crystals like this, by hydrogen, very, very important. There's some more sodium, perfect. And now we're less than 450 away, so that's good. As you can see, your multi-tool has quite the reach on it. It's little plants here giving us carbon, which is important. There's several different um, resources that are very important in the game. One of them, especially early game, one of them is ferrite dust like we're gathering here. One of them sodium, like we got from those sodium-rich plants. Another's carbon, which we're getting from these plants. And then oxygen. Those are probably, and uh, that dihydrogen that we picked up. Those are the most important early game uh, resources that you can find. We'll get a bunch of carbon from this, hopefully. do it. Good, there's some more sodium ahead of us. We'll grab that too, because we're definitely going to need it. Alright, let's move on. Weapon charge is depleted. Oh no, so it refills with carbon, which is why we've been targeting a lot of plants. And just keep moving and keep gathering. This isn't the most efficient way to start, but in the beginning of this game, you really, it's just a matter of getting through this early phase so that you can open up the game and really enjoy it. That's when it gets fun. In the beginning, it's a little tedious, I'm not going to lie. Get these goodies here. All right, look at this down here. What do we got here? Let's charge up our shield. There, it's fully charged. So there's our destination, but I want to show you something real quick before we go there. And there's a ship. You're going to find damaged machinery throughout this game. An early game, it's a great thing to find. You're going to take this living slime, put it in your exosuit, and then just let it open up, and it's going to gift you. Usually with nanites, this time it gave us an upgrade module. Okay, that's fine. And we'll talk about nanites a little bit later. We'll talk about units for money and all that kind of stuff. So we get a mysterious message here, talking about Sentinels, the number 16. And we're going to have to broadcast. And this sends out a message. Traveler anomaly detected. It's compliant. Boom, boom, boom. All that fun stuff there, right? Done. So what's next on our agenda? Well, let's take a look at a spaceship. 
investigate the crashed ship. It's going to go up to it, hold down square, and it's going to show us inside the ship. It's getting online, Atlas connection, launch thrusters are offline, pulse engine offline. Alright, so let us connect the exosuit to it real quick. We need to repair some stuff, so let's look at the systems that need repairing. So we need to repair the pulse engine with a hermetic seal and metal plating. And let's take a look at how that's done. So hermetic seal, metal plating. Okay. The launch thrusters, or thrusters are going to require pure ferrite and dihydrogen jelly. There's a little tritium in there, which is uh, used to fly. So while we're in the ship, we're protected from the elements. The heat won't hurt us. Uh, our oxygen isn't going to go down. So you're safe in here. And this is we're going to take a little bit of time to get acquainted with our ship and how it works, our exosuit and our multi-tool. So let's start with the exosuit. The exosuit has a very limited amount of storage early game that will get better. It's got a general tab, technology tab, and a cargo tab. Now the cargo is like a uh, heavy duty um, storage where you can, it's kind of like a deep storage. So this jetpack, hazard protection, and life support, those are all able to be put into the technology tab. And I recommend we do that right off the bat. So we'll hit square, move over, move the jetpack over. Hazard protection, same thing. Life support, same thing. And then the shield module that we found, it's good for exosuit defense. It's a level A, which is kind of nice. It has a value of 300 nanites. If you look at the top here, we have three units of currency in the game. Units, nanites, and quicksilver. Our first goal is to be able to make a lot of units. Because once we make units, we can definitely farm the hell out of nanites. Quicksilver is another thing. You get that during the game, during specific missions, and once we reach a place called the Anomaly. But that's a story for another day. Okay. So for now, we could use this shield. I'm going to hold on to it because... We're going to try and get some nanites early on. So let's go ahead, exit the ship, and let's check these boxes out here too, like this damaged container. Let me get a little rusted metal from it. Let's store that in our exosuit. That gave us a little bit of oxygen. We won't be able to open these because we need an Atlas Pass, and that's a later thing. All right, so it wants us to make metal plating. Let's search here first real quick. Got us a nice chunk of carbon. Look at that, 45 carbon. Very nice for early game. All right, so we need to make metal plating. So we go into our inventory, we hit X, and we have a bunch of stuff we can make here. Metal plating being one of those things. If you remember correctly, we needed one of those to repair our pulse engine. But we also need a hermetic seal, right? Well, we can't make that as of this moment, so... We're going to have to figure something out. Hop back on the ship. Let it talk to us. Request the assistance, and it's going to show you the location of a hermetic seal. Salvage planetary chart from Distress Beacon Cache. All right. So we'll hop out by hitting square. Head over to this distress beacon. Got a little more ferrite while we're at it, why not? And then pop this baby open. Alright, so we've got a planetary chart. Let's open our inventory up and take a look at it, see what it does. Hold square down, and it's going to scan the area and show us anything of interest in the area. 
And as you can see down in the bottom left corner, we've got a marker indicating that's where we want to go. So let's get to it. Now, I've started this game many times, many different ways. Oh, look, an identified plant that'll give us some oxygen, which is nice, because oxygen is not the easiest thing to come by in the very early portion of the game. I'll keep gathering ferrite and all that fun stuff. But as we get closer here, the weather's going to turn crappier and crappier. So let's stop gathering for now, and let's just beat feet and get over to find this hermetic seal. Now in the bottom right hand corner you'll see there's a little running man icon that shows our stamina level. It's going back up. We can hit R3 and we can start running. And yeah, we better run. We still got over 500 away. So that's not good. Now down in that right corner if you use your jetpack it also shows you your jetpack power. You see how quick it depletes? It's nothing absolute garbage in the beginning of the game. This game is very unforgiving early on, but trust me, stick with me and we'll get you up in the air for a long time with your jetpack. We'll get you a nice big uh, hunk of stamina that you can just run with for a god-awful amount of time. No regrets, no worries. All right, let's run. Storm's getting worse. It's hot, it's gross. Our shield is dropping rapidly. If you look on the bottom left, you see the red uh, bar with the little shield next to it. That's our uh, protection, our hazard protection. Underneath it is our actual um, oxygen. Just keep on moving. Now your oxygen won't refill when you get inside of a building or your ship, but your shield will replenish. So. Our goal is to get to this building over here, and there's always a building when you start off. That's part of the game, is to get there without dying. And that's exactly what we're going to do. I'll look for a door. Here it is. Let's go inside. And you see our shield starts to replenish. Isn't that nice? So let's take a look around here. We have a hollow archive, which... Uh, I believe this is going to give us the Hermetic Seal plan. Or actually, does it just give us one? I don't remember. Yep, okay, it gave us the Hermetic Seal. Awesome. What else is in here? Anything? I think this first one is pretty empty, but there were, I believe, a couple more buildings, so... Let's check those out. Hey, look, another damaged machinery. We'll pick it up, we'll get that viscous fluid, and you save that stuff, and that's the reason for that later on. And now we got our first batch of nanites, 34 nanites. We got nanites before units, isn't that cool? Whoops. Let's get in here. The storm is still going on, but weather ends, you know, it... it See? It's actually clearing, so we'll give it a minute and then we'll uh, head back to the ship. Alright, so we need to get the uh, analysis visor um, installed. That requires carbon nanotubes. And if you remember the way we built our. Um, so I'm going to hit squ square and then install that with an X. We don't have any carbon nanotubes, but if you remember the way we made the uh, metal plating, that's the way we make a carbon nanotube. So we'll hit X in there. We'll use this 50 uh, carbon. Go back to our multi-tool, hit X, and install that puppy. Now it's fixed, and we can hold down L2 to look around and see what's around us. And there's our starship, almost 900 away. So it's a bit of a hike. But the storm's over, so that's cool. And we will get to it. Now another thing you can do once you get this analysis visor is you can 
hold down L2 and then hold down R2 and you can scan things and as you see it finds names for these things uh, tells you what elements you can get from refining them and you get some units so we just scanned three things and we made 900 units in doing so it's a lot of money right ha that's nothing but um but it's a start you can scan little creatures there are creatures there's flora there's fauna there's minerals get some more of this dihydrogen while we're around very important especially earlier in the game now a little trick with your uh multi-tool here is if you look in the upper right hand corner of the screen you see a rising bar that bar is your tool overheating but the closer you work it to the uh to it being overheated the more efficient it is and the more you uh benefit from gathering things you find little boxes like this you're going to want to search them because look at that we got an ion battery a little more sodium some carbon life is good right anything else that's it right now okay we can continue to scan to make money if you want but that's really not that important at this point in the game. We just want to get off this planet, which is an absolute crap planet, and will probably kill us if we stay here too long. So we'll get this ship up and running. And once we do that, we will look to uh, getting things moving a little bit in a, in a, in a more positive direction and and trying to maximize things. There's really not much you can do early on here. I mean, yeah, you could stay around and scan and, and all that, but because it's a hot planet and it has frequent, or not frequent storms, but it has those damn firestorms, you're going to burn through your shield quite a bit. And, you know, finding sodium isn't the easiest thing in the world. There's some up there. And finding oxygen is tough, too. There's O2 over there, so there's an oxygen-rich plant. That works the same way as the sodium-rich plant. It's just for oxygen, so... Did I miss the plant? No, it's up here. Okay. My bad. So we're getting closer and closer to the ship. Less than 200 away now. I can barely run because, you know, we're just a noob. Yes, you can shoot creatures and kill them, but sometimes it, uh, will cause certain creatures to attack you, so it's best not to do that until you're better prepared. The mining laser does work as a weapon as well. As you can see, we've got some oxygen plants. We will definitely take advantage of these. Early game, they are pretty useful, right? Look at that. What the hell's going on? I mean, glitchy. Ended up with almost 70 oxygen just from that. And we're back to the ship. Let's hop on in there where we're safe and let's get things fixed up. So we've got our hermetic seal now. We'll install that. We'll back out. Let's take a look at our... That wants us to do the launch thrusters. Okay. So because we were gathering up lots of dihydrogen we can automatically make that dihydrogen jelly right away we don't have to screw around with that right see we planned ahead now we back out and we need pure ferrite to repair the launch thrusters but all we have is ferrite dust so what do we do oh no well we use a refiner so
we need to craft the metal plating to do that. Okay, that's right. Let's do that real quick. And what's that leave us for ferrite? Right, we still got a decent amount of ferrite, right? So if we push up on our D-pad, it shows us deployable technology. One of those things being this wonderful portable refiner. We're going to put some carbon in it to fuel it up. Throw the ferrite dust in there. Hold down the square, and in 14 seconds, we're going to have 118 pure ferrite, which is more than enough to repair the ship and get it off the ground. So we got that done. We'll collect it, put it in our exosuit. Back out, and then hold down R3 to pick this up. You don't want to leave it there. And we're going to gather a little more ferrite dust just because it operates differently than uh, pure ferrite, you know, so we want to make up for some of what we lost there. We overheated the gun, so it takes a moment to cool back down. All right, good enough for now. Open this up, get the launch thrusters repaired. Bingo, done. And now what are we gonna do? We're gonna hop in that ship. Launch systems are online. We're gonna hit R2 and we're gonna take off. And there we go, 23 minutes to get through that little basic, most basic part of the tutorial and getting us airborne. Now, while we're up here, I push down on the D-pad and I go over here and I change my starship view because I prefer looking at my ship like this. It, it'll be a preference thing. You may want to do it first person, you may not. You see there's these massive asteroid fields. I highly recommend hitting one up early on. Uh, just for a little bit you'll gain some tritium and just like your uh, mining tool it overheats so you got to be careful, right? Especially early on when it's just a basic weapon, it's really bad. Instead of holding down on it, it's better to do short bursts. Alright, we're just going to screw around a little bit here. You'll see that one, that one's a little weird looking. All right. Now we need to test boost with the uh, circle button. Whoops. Whoop, I hit a couple uh, asteroids there, and that's not good. And then we hold down L1 and R1 to, te R1 to test the pulse engine. Hit L2 to get out of that. Now we have a communication coming through. We push down on our D-pad. And let's see what they uh, want to tell us. So I'm going to identify myself. The different choices you make here aren't that big of a deal. Play it how you want to play it. Okay, so we got some planetary coordinates, as you can see. There's the signal source. So we're going to line that up in our reticle there and hold down L1, R1, and bingo, we're headed towards it. You can see over there, it says press L3 to scan the planet. Let's scan it real quick. This is an irradiated planet, so we're going from a burning hot planet to an irradiated planet. That's just ducky. So, again, the goal is to get yourself onto the very first space station as quickly as possible because once you're there um, and then 
you know, you can start to advance the story a little bit and get some better stuff, but what we want to do right now is just follow this basic tutorial part, okay? Now, if you're feeling brave, you could have stayed on the other planet, gathered some resources up, and spent some time doing that, but quite honestly, until you have the ability to improve your equipment, your ship, your multi-tool, all that stuff, it's not worth it, you know, it's just, it's too time-consuming, too tedious, and quite frankly, a little too dangerous in the beginning, so we don't want to mess with that. All right, so we're coming up on this signal source. We can push down on L3 to scan. We see an unknown building up ahead. And that's, this is an approximate source. I'm guessing this unknown building might be what we're looking for. Let's try and land next to it and see. If that's not it, then we'll have to do some scanning and traveling. So hit the square, flying nice and low and nice and slow. We land. And we uh, open up. There's the Sentinel. Hopefully he's not going to be violent. Um, so we hold down L2, push to the right once we go to target suite mode. Signal source is located and See, we landed right next to it. It's another one of those damaged machineries. But this one's called Broken Technology. So let's pop it open. Decipher the signal. There's that number 16 again. Get well acquainted with that because throughout this game, that number will haunt you. All right, so the game just gave us a base computer which requires chromatic metal to use. And the terrain manipulator to build that, we need carbon nanotubes and dihydrogen jelly, both of which we've already built. So let's go into our inventory and let us craft a product and we'll craft a nanotube. We'll craft a dihydrogen jelly. We'll go over to our multi-tool Hit square to install technology and put in that terrain manipulator. Oops. We need two nanotubes. There we go. Back into the multi-tool and it's done. Alright, so now our little mining beam that does this with the push of the triangle button here in the PlayStation, it becomes a terrain manipulator. And we need to gather some copper. So we're going to look around, and fortunately, we've got copper right nearby. Deposits are always indicated by that diamond shape there. And when I looked at it through my scanner, I held down the square button to tag it so that it stays in my view. Okay? Where is this thing? Looks like it's below us. We're gonna have to go underground for this or what? Ooh, we got a big drop off here, huh? Well, there it is. So, we're gonna hit it with the terrain manipulator and try and gather 60 copper up. You get silicone uh, powder or silicate powder as a uh, byproduct, which is cool. That comes in use. Uh, later on in the game for building purposes. I would have preferred to stand closer to this to take a better look at it, but that's okay. If I hit the uh, L3 button, it scans it and it shows the deposit underground a little bit so we can see that there's more under there. Let's just gather that stuff up. So we've only got 29. Well, that kind of sucks. Well, there's our ship. And that's a uranium deposit. We don't want that. That's uranium. We don't want that. All 
That's copper, but that's a long ways away. Salt. Very useful, but we're not going to get it right now. There's a building. There's copper that's 241 away. So let's hold down the square. And let's head over there. Oh, geez, I fell in the hole. The hole that I made. That's not good. All right, we managed to get out of it. Switch back to our mining beam to kill this guy so we can get a little oxygen. We'll definitely pick some of this up while we're here because that's always handy. There's a little more oxygen. All right. Let's get over and get this copper. You can be meticulous and gather all this. I'm just kind of doing some drive-by stuff as we travel because <coughs> I want to get us out of here and onto the space station. Hit triangle to get our terrain manipulator again, and we're back to work on the copper. Yeah, you want to be careful not to like shoot under your feet. We got plenty now, as you can see down in the bottom right corner, it's telling us to process it. We'll just gather a little bit more stuff while we're here. You can see there's plenty down there. This will come in handy. Uh, big time later on. Perfect. So we got a building over here, right? Let's go check out this building real quick. Um, if for no other reason than to get a free charge up on our uh, suit, on its shield at least, and to uh, check out this damaged machinery, maybe pick up a couple more nanites and some more of this viscous fluid. All right, so we need to recharge our life support. Let's go inside where we're safe. Push down, boom, life support, 90 oxygen. Totally full, and our protection is filling up. Let's get it all the way full. All right. Check out this other building here real quick. Whoops. Here is, uh, oh, look at that, we can extract some nanites. 58 there, so we've got a total of 92 so far, 2,400 units. Not bad. Not bad at all for a little start. All right, where's our ship? We have to hold down L2 for the scanner. We see our ship, we can tag it. And let's get going. Pretty cool looking plant there, right? Switch back to the mining tool. We're not in a big hurry. We don't have any storm going on. So let's grab... Oh, that one gives carbon and oxygen. So that's kind of nice. Carbon and gamma root. Gamma root won't be important early on, but we can do stuff with that. It's fine. Gather, 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 gather. Cool looking plant there, right? We can't interact with it yet. We need a hazmat glove, but we'll get there. Very close to our ship. When we get to our ship, we're going to do like we did before. And push up on the D-pad. We'll get our portable refiner. Drop that puppy down. Open it up, throw in some of that wonderful carbon we've been finding, and the copper. Let's just put half of it in. We don't need that much, I don't think, so we'll put half of it. That way we keep some of the copper, but we're making chromatic metal. 
Chromatic Metal is another important early game resource, and it remains important throughout the game. A lot of stuff that you build requires Chromatic Metal, and Chromatic Metal can be used in a variety of ways when it comes to using this refiner, or should I say, the more upgraded, you have a medium size and a large refiner, so put that back in the exosuit, and then we hold down our three to pick this up. Don't accidentally leave it, you'll waste the carbon. Now it wants us to create a base computer, so let's go ahead and do that. The base computer costs 30 chromatic metal. We'll pop it down. Then we interact with it. And it's going to check the area to see if anybody has a base. Within its range, I think they need to be a thousand units apart in measurement, so something like that, so it is what it is. With the size of this game, you're not going to find anybody around you, so. Wow. That's big. Okay. So we got the computer down. Sorry, I got distracted there. And we're going to access it. And it's going to give us a set of blueprints. Let's extract them. So we got doors, walls, floors, a roof, floral containment decoration. So basically it wants us to build a base right now. So just like we deployed our um, portable refiner, we push up and we have different tabs up top here. And these are going to show us the different things we can build within the range of our base. And the range, I believe, is approximately 300 away from uh, your little base computer. But that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, starting next episode, we'll make the base and we'll continue with the basics of uh, getting started and getting to where you can really enjoy the game. So thanks for joining me. As always, I'm Captain Beefy with the Game Vault. This has been uh, like a little quick start, No Man's Sky kind of thing for the tutorial. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell for notifications. Don't forget to leave a comment and a like on the video down below. Let me know what you think. I also have a lot of other uh, No Man's Sky videos up there using my main um, character. So you take a look through them for some more advanced stuff that will show you what the game has in store for you later on. But for now, we're sticking with the basics. We'll see you next time.